my dear students welcome back to our channel students in this video i am explaining telangana intermediate second year subject botany part c long questions 8 marks let's start quick revision first important question is 1 give a brief account of the tools of recombinant dna technology Recombinant DNA technology allows scientists to combine genes from different organisms to create new genetic combinations. Several tools are essential for this process and each one helps in manipulating DNA. 1 restriction enzymes molecular scissors. These are proteins that act like scissors to cut DNA at specific points. Each restriction enzyme recognizes a particular sequence of DNA and cuts it at that spot. Example: The enzyme E. coli cuts DNA at the sequence GATT. This cut leaves sticky ends, overhanging pieces of DNA, which can easily be joined with other DNA. Two DNA ligase molecular glue. After DNA is cut by restriction enzymes. DNA ligase is used to glue the ends of the DNA back together. This is important for combining different pieces of DNA. Example: After cutting a gene with E. coli, DNA ligase can be used to attach it to another piece of DNA, such as a plasmid, creating recombinant DNA. Three plasmids DNA vectors. Plasmids are small. circular pieces of dna found in bacteria they can be used to carry foreign genes into bacterial cells once inside the cell the gene can be copied or used to produce proteins example a gene for producing human insulin can be inserted into a plasmid and then introduced into bacteria the bacteria will produce insulin which can be harvested for medical use Four polymerase chain reaction (PCR). PCR is a technique used to rapidly make many copies of a specific DNA segment. It uses cycles of heating and cooling to make copies of DNA. Example: If you want to study a particular gene, PCR can quickly create millions of copies of that gene from a small sample. Summary. The main tools of recombinant DNA technology, restriction enzymes, DNA ligase, plasmids and PCR allow scientists to manipulate DNA for various purposes such as creating genetically modified organisms, producing medicines and conducting research. Next important question is to describe the tissue culture technique What are the advantages of tissue culture over conventional method of plant breeding in crop improvement programs? Tissue culture technique. Tissue culture is a technique where plant cells, tissues or organs are grown in a controlled, sterile environment outside the plant. The process involves taking a small piece of a plant called an explant and placing it in a nutrient-rich medium. This allows the plant cells to grow and develop into new plants. Steps of tissue culture. One selection of explant, a small piece of plant tissue like a leaf, stem or root is selected. Two sterilization, the explant is sterilized to remove any bacteria or fungi. Three culturing, the sterilized explant is placed in a sterile container with a nutrient medium like agar containing essential minerals vitamins and hormones for regeneration under the right conditions light temperature the explant starts to grow and develop into a new plant five hardening the newly grown plants are moved to soil or another medium to adjust to outdoor conditions before planting in the field example If a farmer wants to produce a large number of plants with desirable traits like disease resistance they can use tissue culture to generate clones of a plant that has those traits Advantages of tissue culture over conventional plant breeding 1 faster results tissue culture can produce new plants quickly 
often in weeks, while traditional breeding takes years. 2. Disease-free plants Tissue culture can be used to create plants that are free from diseases, as only healthy tissue is used to start the culture. 3. Large-scale propagation One small piece of tissue can be used to generate thousands of identical plants, making it ideal for mass production. 4. Uniformity Tissue culture produces genetically identical plants, clones, ensuring uniformity in the crop. 5. Conservation of rare species Rare or endangered plants can be preserved and propagated using tissue culture, which might not be possible through traditional breeding. Example In crop improvement programs, tissue culture helps rapidly multiply high-yielding or pest-resistant varieties, which is more efficient than conventional breeding methods. In summary, tissue culture is a powerful tool for producing high-quality, uniform crops in a shorter time, with more control over the plant's traits. Next important question is 3. Explain Calvin Cycle Calvin Cycle The Calvin Cycle is a process used by plants to make food, glucose, from carbon dioxide, co, and water. It occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the fluid-filled space surrounding the thylakoid membranes. The cycle is also known as the light-independent reaction or dark reaction, as it does not require light directly, though it happens right after the light reactions in photosynthesis. Here's a simple breakdown of the Calvin cycle. Steps of the Calvin cycle 1. Carbon Fixation The cycle starts when Co from the air is attached to a 5-carbon molecule called RuBP, ribulose bisphosphate, by an enzyme called Rubisco. This forms an unstable 6-carbon compound, which quickly splits into 3-carbon molecules of 3-PGA, 3 3-phosphoglycerate. 3 2. Reduction these 3 PGA molecules are then converted into a more energy-rich molecule called G3P, glyceraldehyde, 3-phosphate, using energy from ATP, from the light reactions, and NADF, also from the light reactions. This step reduces the 3 PGA molecules by adding electrons. 3. Regeneration some of the G3P molecules are used to make glucose and other carbohydrates. The remaining G3P molecules are used to regenerate RuBP, the starting molecule, using more ATP. This step ensures the cycle can continue. 4. Glucose Formation Eventually, some of the G3P molecules exit the cycle and are used to form glucose C6H12O6 and other sugars, which the plant uses for energy and growth. Example In a simple example, a plant takes in co from the air through its leaves. Through the Calvin cycle, it converts co into glucose, which can then be used as a food source for the plant. Summary The Calvin cycle is crucial for photosynthesis, as it helps plants produce glucose from carbon dioxide and energy from the sun. This process is the foundation of energy production in plants and indirectly supports life on earth by providing food and oxygen. Next important question is 4. Explain the reactions of Krebs cycle Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle The Krebs cycle also known as the citric acid cycle, is a crucial part of cellular respiration. It takes place in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. The cycle helps break down food molecules, like glucose, to produce energy in the form of ATP. The Krebs cycle works after glucose is broken down into a smaller molecule called acetylcholine. Here's a simple breakdown of the Krebs cycle. Steps of the Krebs cycle 1. Formation of citrate The cycle begins when a 2-carbon molecule called acetyl-CoA from the breakdown of glucose or fats combines with a 4-carbon molecule called oxalocetate, forming a 6-carbon molecule called citrate, 
सिट्रिक एसिड टू फर्स्ट डी कार्बोक्शियल तियोन सिट्रेट अंडर गोज अ सीरीज ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वेर वन कार्बन इज रिमूव्ड एज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड को दिस फॉर्म्स अ फाइव कार्बन मोलिक्यूल कॉल्ड एल्फा केटोग्यूटरेट ड्यूरिंग दिस स्टेप हाई एनर्जी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर ट्रांसफर्ड टू नद प्लस फॉर्मिंग नद थ्री सेकेंड डी कार्बोक्शिल्तियोन द फाइव कार्बन मोलिक्यूल अंडर गोज अ नदर डी कार्बोक्शिल्तियोन रिलीसिंग अ नदर को एंड फॉर्मिंग अ फोर कार्बन मोलिक्यूल कॉल्ड सक्सिनिल कोई अगेन नाद इज प्रोड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम हाई एनर्जी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फोर ए टी पी फॉर्मेशन द फोर कार्बन मोलिक्यूल सक्सिनल कोए इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू सक्सिनेट दिस स्टेप प्रोड्यूसेज वन ए टी पी और जी टी पी थ्रू अ प्रोसेस कॉल्ड सबस्ट्रेट लेवल फॉस्फोराइलेशन फाइव ऑक्सीडेशन सक्सिनेट इज ऑक्सीडाइज टू फॉर्म फ्यूमरेट एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर ट्रांसफर्ड टू फैड फॉर्मिंग एफ ए डी एच टू सिक्स हाइड्रेशन फ्यूमरेट इज देन कन्वर्टेड इन टू मेलेट बाय एडिंग अ वॉटर मोलिक्यूल सेवन रिजनरेशन ऑफ ऑक्सिलोसिटेट फाइनली मेलेट इज ऑक्सीडाइज टू रिजनरेट ऑक्सिलोसिटेट प्रोड्यूसिंग नाद दिस अलाउज द साइकिल टू स्टार्ट अगेन एग्जाम्पल इन अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल ग्लूकोज इज ब्रोकन डाउन इन टू एसिटिल कोए विच एंटर्स द क्रेब्स साइकिल दिस साइकिल रिलीसेज एनर्जी स्टोर्ड इन ग्लूकोज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ नाद एफ ए डी एच टू एंड ए टी पी विच आर यूज बाय द सेल फॉर एनर्जी समरी द क्रेब्स साइकिल प्लेज अ क्रिटिकल रोल इन सेल्युलर रेस्पिरेशन बाय कन्वर्टिंग फूड इन टू यूजबल एनर्जी ए टी पी फॉर एवरी टर्न ऑफ द साइकिल इट प्रोड्यूसेज हाई एनर्जी मोलिक्यूल्स नाद एंड एफ ए डी एच टू which are later used in the electron transport chain to generate even more atp next important question is 5 explain briefly the various processes of recombinant dna technology recombinant dna technology processes recombinant dna technology involves combining dna from two or more different organisms to create new genetic combinations it is used for creating genetically modified organisms gmos producing medicines and conducting genetic research here are the main steps involved one isolation of dna the first step is to isolate the dna that you want to work with this could be a gene from a human a plant or a bacterium the dna is extracted from the cells of the organism example if we want to insert the gene for insulin production into bacteria we first isolate the insulin gene from human dna to cutting the dna next restriction enzymes are used to cut the dna into smaller pieces at specific sequences these enzymes act like scissors cutting dna at exact locations creating sticky ends that are easier to join with other dna pieces example the enzyme e coari cuts dna at a specific sequence got tuck leaving sticky ends 3 inserting the gene the gene of interest is inserted into a vector like a plasmid a small circular dna molecule the plasmid is then cut open with the same restriction enzyme and the gene is inserted into the plasmid using an enzyme called dna ligase this glues the pieces of dna together example the insulin gene is inserted into a plasmid that will be used to carry the gene into bacteria four transformation the recombinant dna plasmid with the gene is introduced into a host cell typically a bacterium like e coli through a process called transformation the bacteria take up the new plasmid and start producing the protein encoded by the gene example the plasmid with the insulin gene is introduced into bacteria the bacteria then produce insulin 5 selection and cloning the transformed bacteria are grown on a medium and only those with the desired plasmid are selected these bacteria are then cloned replicated 
to produce large amounts of the gene product. Example, the bacteria producing insulin are selected and allowed to grow. They multiply and produce insulin in large quantities. Summary Recombinant DNA technology is a step-by-step -step process that allows scientists to isolate, cut, insert, and grow new genes. This technology has many applications, such as producing medicines like insulin, creating genetically modified crops, and advancing genetic research. Next important question is, 6. Write brief essay on microbes in sewage treatments. Microbes in sewage treatment Sewage treatment is an essential process that cleans wastewater before it is released into the environment. One of the most important methods for treating sewage is biological treatment where microbes, tiny organisms, are used to break down harmful substances in the sewage. These microbes help clean the water by digesting organic waste and pollutants, making it safe to release back into nature. How Microbes Help in Sewage Treatment Microbes such as bacteria, fungi, and protozoa play a key role in the sewage treatment process. They break down organic materials, like food scraps, human waste, and chemicals, into simpler, less harmful substances. The process works in stages, which involve different types of microbes at each stage. 1. Primary Treatment In the first stage, large solid waste such as sand, grease, and debris is removed from the sewage. This is done through screening and settling. Although microbes are not involved at this stage, it prepares the water for the next step. 2. Secondary Treatment this is where microbes become crucial. Sewage is passed into large tanks where aerobic bacteria, bacteria that need oxygen, break down the organic matter. These bacteria consume the waste and turn it into simpler substances like carbon dioxide and water. This stage often involves activated sludge, where sewage is mixed with a large amount of microbial biomass to speed up the decomposition process. Example, in a treatment plant, E. coli and other bacteria break down the organic waste in the sewage. These bacteria are cultured and added to the sewage to speed up the process. 3. Tertiary Treatment After the secondary treatment, the water is further cleaned to remove any remaining harmful substances. Here, anaerobic bacteria, bacteria that don't need oxygen, break down remaining organic matter in the absence of oxygen. This step may also include filtering and chemical treatments. Benefits of using microbes Using microbes in sewage treatment is cost-effective and eco-friendly. The bacteria and other microbes naturally break down waste without the need for harmful chemicals, making the water cleaner and safer for the environment. Example, microbial treatment is used in wastewater treatment plants worldwide, from small local systems to large urban treatment plants. Conclusion Microbes are essential in sewage treatment, helping break down organic waste in a natural and environmentally friendly way. Their ability to degrade harmful substances makes them invaluable for maintaining clean water and protecting public health. I hope you understand easily each question. All the best students for your upcoming exam. For other subject quick revision. Important questions. Previous question papers and syllabus. Links are available in description. Check out once. Thank you for watching. Like and share this video with your friends.